Today we are checking out the Sabre tactical chassis for the FX Dreamline. And I'll tell you what, this right here, it's gonna spoil you. If you get one of these for your Dreamline, it is gonna make every one of your other air guns feel kind of wrong shooting. And what I mean by that is the adjustability on this uh, platform basically can tweak every element and every aspect of my shooting style to me as the individual shooter. I can adjust the cheek rest, the height of the cheek rest, the length of the pole of the stock. You've got a super long rail there to adjust where you want your bipod to sit. The adjustability on this thing is absolutely awesome. So as compared to a lot of other air guns that are out there, um, the FX uh, Dreamline uh, setup is really made to be completely customized to fit your shooting style. And the Sabre chassis takes that concept really to the next level. And not only what it looks like, but also how it shoots. So but with the Sabre tactical chassis, what you have here is you actually have multiple accessories kind of baked into one. And what I mean by that is you've got an adjustable butt stock. You've got an adjustable cheek rest. You've got an extended rail. Uh, you've got a bag rider. So you've got a lot of different things going on in this one accessory that if you had to buy multiple accessories and string them all together into one, you're probably gonna end up paying even more money than what you're paying with uh, this thing. So one of the reasons why I am absolutely loving this, quite honestly, is the adjustable cheek rest. Um, this thing is absolutely awesome and the reason being is i really like shooting off of these single piece mounts specifically i use the uh the burris pepper mount i really like this it's got uh, 20 moa built into it for the element titan scope and it sits a little bit high and so i need that adjustability in the cheek rest to really get that proper sight picture and it's so perfect that once i got it set up i can basically just close my eyes put my cheek on the rest open them and i've got the exact same sight picture every single time the extended rail on this thing is a huge plus i really like kicking out that uh, bipod as far forward as i possibly want so yeah it's, it's actually set up to accept arca swiss attachment so that way if you're shooting off of a tripod and so one of the little features on this that i don't think a lot of people are talking about yet it's really cool is it actually has right underneath here it's got a um a mount for just a regular camera tripod and so not all of us have an arca swiss uh, head on our tripods but most of us have just a regular uh, head mount for a regular tripod and so if you've got a a beefier tripod set up for maybe like a video camera um, you can just use the regular uh, threaded port that's on the back side of this rail right here and now you've got a setup shooting off of a tripod all right so there it is so there are the features i absolutely love about this thing uh the setup on this and the installation was pretty easy um you may have a dreamline classic versus this is one of the newer dreamlines that just came out so if you've got a uh, older uh, dreamline classic uh definitely check out pj's video from wisconsin air gunners so yeah pj does an absolutely awesome job showing you how to install it on a uh, dreamline classic so my Dreamline is one of the uh, the newer models. Uh, I actually just got this probably I think about maybe four months ago. So this I would I would consider this the uh, the most recent model. It's got the power wheel on the side here, and uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go over how to install this. It, it's not very hard at all. There's just a couple different steps in there. You really need to be careful. Make sure you're uh, kind of paying attention to some of these gotcha points. So let's check out the installation process. All right, here we go. All right, so first off, you're gonna get this really awesome box in the mail, the chassis, all the parts, everything that you need is right here inside this box. So what you wanna do now is you wanna prep your rifle for uh, the installation of the chassis. So really the only few things that you need to do is remove the rear butt stock, remove the hand grip, and then you're also gonna to wanna to remove the uh, lower trigger guard assembly. And to do that, there's just two hex screws there at the bottom of the uh, trigger guard assembly. You're just going to remove those and the uh, trigger guard assembly comes right off. So in order to remove this rear block where that buffer tube was screwed into the rifle, there's going to be two uh, Allen screws in the top of the Picatinny rail. You're going to want to remove both of those screws and what that's going to do, it's going to allow you to release that rear uh, block assembly to pull it out. 
So before we remove that rear block assembly, you're going to want to take off your power wheel adjuster. And this is a really critical and important step to remember. When you take the wheel off, there's two little ball bearings there that are like detents. And what you want to make sure you do is be very careful. Those ball bearings do not fall out. And they're really just held in with uh, some grease, basically. So when you set that aside, make sure you, you set it so the uh, ball bearings are up. Maybe even put it into a bag so you don't lose them. So yeah, be very careful with those. So another area of caution with this step of the process is there's gonna be two small springs where those ball bearings sit. And you really wanna be careful not to flip over that rear block assembly when you pull it out because those little springs can fall out of those holes. So yeah, be really careful uh, handling this and make sure that you keep that upright. So when you pull out the rear block assembly, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's actually two parts this. There's a top half and then there's a lower half. But the top half is removed by uh, taking out these two hex bolts that are at the very top. So when you unscrew those, this comes into two halves and you're gonna set aside that top half and then you're gonna replace it with a dummy block that comes in the box of parts with your Sabre Tactical chassis. Okay, so now that you've got the uh, top dummy block and the rear hammer spring uh, block assembly, you're going to slide that back into the rifle. So now you're going to slide the entire rifle assembly back into the chassis. And then there's a silver screw that came with your kit that screws into the back of that block assembly that keeps that entire area together. And the second silver screw that came with your chassis uh, goes into the bottom just forward of the trigger guard assembly. And really just with those two screws, it just keeps everything locked in together. So now you're going to take the power wheel assembly, making sure you keep those uh, ball bearings upright and so they don't fall out. You are going to very carefully line it up with the two spring hole areas to make sure that it's all lined up. The easiest way to do this is just kind of remember what setting it was on. So for instance, when I took it off, it was on max was at the top. And so when I reline it up, max is also going to be on the top and the ball bearings will sit right into those spring holes you're going to tighten back down the power wheel assembly making sure that you don't really tighten that hex uh, screw down too tight you really don't need a lot of have, uh, pressure there and then take all the parts that you have left over put them back in the saber tactical box and then finally i personally like using the uh, ergo grips and so uh, the chassis can take any ar style grip it's a really quick swap out with a single bolt you pop in your ar style grip and you're ready to rock all right so that's it you got your chassis installed and you're ready to head to the range set up the uh, cheek rest how you want it. you can set up the butt stock and now what we're going to do is we're going to zero the rifle and we're going to start doing some long range precision shooting today. So it's pretty windy at the range today. I'm not going to be able to push it out too far. Really not going to be able to shoot for groups as well as I'd want to. We are going to be shooting the FX hybrid slugs that have a much higher BC uh, around 0 0.09. So they are going to buck the wind uh, a bit, but it is super gusty today. So we're going to go and see what we can do. Maybe even hit a golf ball at 150 yards. So yeah, let's uh, get her zeroed, shoot a couple 100-yard uh, groups, and push it out to 150. All right, here we go. All right, so all the way out there, we've got the 150-yard golf ball. Bring it all the way back to our shooting position. Recording it there on the Tacticam. See how many shots it'll take us. Wind's pushing kind of in our face, right to left. I'll hold a little bit on this first shot. Wait for it to quit shifting a little bit. All right, here we go. Oh, this left. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby.
All right, there it is. Two shots, baby. Shot number one was a little bit off to the left. Shot number two, right there. So, yeah, I'll take it. Sabre Tactical chassis, freaking love that thing. All right, so there it is everybody, the Sabre Tactical chassis for the FX Dreamline. So definitely a premium accessory that if you really want to set up your gun to be perfect for you, I definitely highly recommend this. Check them out at Utah Air Guns. Thanks everybody for joining me. This is Chris with Up North Air Gunner. Take care.